To me, it would be nice if feminism were to focus on women. Just on women. Just on women's issues. Stop doing this intersectional thing. Do you know why? Because, I'm sorry, just as much as men don't seem to be able to understand what women go through, women don't seem to be able to understand what men go through. And that's a problem. Okay, now, in the same way that many of you support the idea of the progressive stack, um, and many of you shove forth that we shouldn't speak for groups that we are not a part of, um, there are a lot of feminists out there who seem to think that they know what makes men tick, what motivates men, besides the, the, you know, well, you can look into the studies of stuff, the studies of, of how men look at things, but for you to know what it's like to experience being a man in this society and the pressures that are put onto men, and you might say, well, well, that's what we're trying to discuss. You know, when you talk about toxic masculinity, well, that's not how it's taken. That isn't how it's taken. You need to find a different way of discussing it. See, and this, this, is, this is where the, the, pro the problem lies with the way that's, that social things get studied, formally studied. Because there seems to be this complete disconnect of society and the way things are studied. If you're going to make things more accurate and accessible by people, then what needs to be done is the, the language and ways that you discuss it in, in these uh, scholarly contexts, contexts, contexts. For some reason, that, that, that word is hard to say. It's sort of like... Sometimes freeway route is is a hard one, and sports statistics. There it is. I can't just say it. Sports statistics. There we go. Okay. If we were really being smart about it, we'd be trying to bridge the gap between those things. But instead, what's going on most of the time is that people are making declarations about anyone who doesn't uh, discuss things in that scholarly way. You know, there are people, there are so many people that are trying to get an understanding of a lot of this stuff. And because they didn't word it the right way, you're not willing to even acknowledge that, hey, they're, they're trying to be cool. They're, they're really trying. They're trying to understand. But if you, if you want to reach the public, you have to use the same language as the, the, the same uh, definitions of words as the public. You can use a diff, slightly different language and then explain what this word means and what that word means, but you don't hijack words that already exist and turn them into something else. Oh, we're, well, we're just adding to it. No, no, no. If the things that you're adding to it haven't caught on in 47 years, it, it's, it's time to just stop. Just stop. Find a different way to discuss it. You know, if, if, uh, it, if the way that something is studied, if you're saying that it's static, it can never change, the way things are studied have to remain the same, even when, and they can't adapt, even when society has changed so much. You're saying that the study of something cannot be adapted. You, you can't modify it. You can't change the way that it is, it is discussed. Oh, no, no, you can't do that. It's, it's, a, it's a solid rock. No, it, it isn't. Just like anything else, this can change. And, and our understandings of a lot of different things have changed over time. Even in the medical field, a lot of understandings of things have changed over time. There have been a lot of uh, discoveries that make us go, oh, shit. 
and then we change the way we do things. But if, if, if formal education has become this, this, this monolithic thing that is not supposed to twist and change in time and in the way that society changes, then what the fuck is the use of it? What's the use of it? So you can go around, oh, look at me, I'm so educated and use these words these certain ways so I can, so I can degrade everyone around who doesn't use the words the same way. No, just fuck that shit. You know, and that is what you're doing. Imagine if, I mean, okay, think about this. Okay, think about this. There, there are people that, that will just, they'll say, you know, there, there'll be opera playing in the background and they go, oh, I, oh man, I, I just can't get into opera. And this person comes, well, you know, that's not opera. That's, and they'll, 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 they'll name how they know all these labels for, for all these styles that sound very similar to opera, but it's not, you know, and you, and you got to give them some, you got to teach them something immediately because they just said opera and, and you're offended because they don't know something, right? Even though you know what the fuck they mean, they're just saying, I'm just not into this kind of style generally, right? <laughs> you know? It's like that, but <laughs> it's about really important words, really important concepts that people are supposed to use words differently for. You know, racism and sexism are very, very important concepts. You know, when something is institutionalized or almost normalized, you know, that's a problem. That does have a much more of an effect. Why can't you word it that way? Well, because you want to hijack a word and then, and then people will, will, do, will do somersaults to, to try to defend that way of, of, of describing it. Well, it's the proper way. It's the proper way. When education becomes monolithic, there's a problem. There's a big problem. Think about how you feel when you watch reenactments of the social structure back in, you know, the Victorian era. Look at all these rules that they had to live by and there was all this stuffiness and you're, you're no good unless you do these things this way. Okay. History repeats itself and it can come up through means that are, that are not expected. But when you start using this language on a constant basis to degrade others, to shame others, you're pretty much doing the same thing as, as that bullshit kind of society, that stuffy, st nose in the air kind of thing. Um, that we would look at and gag and go, man, how could people live that way? Well, this is the same shit. History repeats itself, and it's when it repeats itself, it's not going to be done exactly the same way. When our education system is not able to adapt, what do you expect the results to be like? When the education system is completely at odds with the rest of society, yet what do you expect things to be like? Do you think that you can't be a stuffy snob uh, kind of person if you, uh, you know, you don't talk with a British accent? <laughs> I mean, is that the only way that some of you actually think that someone can be those things? Well, well, you have to have like this and you have to talk like this and is that, do you think that's how someone has to be to have that kind of attitude? Are, are you are you really that uneducated? I guess that's not the word. Are you really that unobservant? Are you really that unable to piece together the ways that we've acted in the past and seeing how those things continue in the future? Same thing happens with fashion. Same thing happens with just about anything. Same thing happens in music. Same thing happens in, 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 in like social trends. Same thing happens in movies. You know, it's, it's cyclical. 
And when it repeats, it's different than last time, but there's still these things that remain, uh, uh, you know, patterns of the past. Then different parts of, uh, uh, of our culture will repeat their cyclical pattern, will complete their cyclical pattern at slightly different times. You know, fashion is different than the entertainment industry. You know, the, the, the way it's cyclical is just a little different. It's, it's off by about, I don't know, eight years or something like that. And we, we, got all, we got all of these things. And you can't recognize that some of you have become the people that you'd go, Oh God, how could people live like that? How could people live with so many rules? How could people, you know... And that's what I was meaning in my other video. Things have become very confusing for people. When you have so many rules that don't really, they, they don't always make much sense. But we're supposed to be, well, good people. And good people always follow all the rules or, or some weird bullshit like that. I mean, just the entire idea of infantilizing society to where this is good and this is bad. These people are good and these people are bad. I, I mean, when you, when you start doing that to, to society, I mean, what do you expect the result to be? In the name of protecting people from themselves, we're making people stupid. And a mindset can indeed make someone stupid. If you've made it a thing not to put much processing on, on, on a whole bunch of areas, they'll essentially kind of atrophy. You know, you don't, you don't use that part, well, you know, it's going to go. And yeah, you'll still be able to focus on the thing, the other areas, but... Uh, you know, you, you never build up those muscles, so to speak. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, some mindsets can essentially make someone stupid. And that seems to be what we're wanting to do to our children. Let's make the children stupid. So, you know, they don't have to learn uh, any, any painful lessons whatsoever. All of their lessons should be happy and beautiful, like a like a Disney version of a dark story. You know, that's one thing I really like about a lot of cartoons that were made in the 70s. I think it was one of the very best periods when it comes to, to cartoons as far as they would present, it was probably all the way up until about 82, they would present things in a very dark fashion where a lot of people around are, are, are not going to be very friendly. And it's this idea, hey, it's a scary place out there, but if, if you maneuver the right way, you'll, you'll get through. You know, you look at the concept of Scooby-Doo, and it's, uh, uh, you know, until the 80s came up and, and they just kind of destroyed some of this, this element. Oh, the ghosts are real now. Oh, great. That, you just destroyed the entire point. Kind of like what happened to Star Trek when it became the new Star Trek movies, completely losing the point of the old ones. But, you know, in, in, in the 70s, it was, it, the, you know, the villain, the ghost, the, the, the monster is always a person wearing a costume trying to get away with some, something because they're greedy about something, right? And it's showing, hey, there, you know, there's, there's some shitty people out there and sometimes things that look really scary aren't that scary. That's the message. And, uh, yeah, we, we don't really have that anymore. Now, what, what I hate about the way that our formal education seem, system seems to be here is that it's, been, it's become monolithic. It's become something where you're, you're teaching this idea that there is only, I mean, there is only one truth. And I'm not talking about facts, because facts, I mean... You, uh, you you can't uh, make up uh, your own facts, but you can come up with your own conclusions. But if 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 schools are teaching that there is only one conclusion, 
then that's, that's not teaching people how to think. That's teaching people what to think. And it's been happening in, 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 in K through 12 for a long time. And there are so many building blocks that people aren't getting. I mean, like for instance, just, okay, rules, the reasons for rules, and appropriate outcomes of breaking particular rules. Why are those rules the way they are? Why are they carried out the way they are? These sorts of things are very, very, very important for someone to learn when they're growing up. And we've taken that away. The, the most idiotic thing we could do to kids is this zero tolerance policies on a bunch of shit. Fucking idiotic. Any of you supporting this shit, you, you are an idiot. Do you know what you're doing to the kids when you're doing this? Do you care what you're doing to the kids? Terrible policy on anything. Oh, zero tolerance. Anything that even hints on this is the same thing as anything extreme on this. Do you know what that creates? Well, that creates kids that are just like, well, you know, if I'm going to get punished the same way, whether I do something small or something big, then let's do something big. Let's go on a shooting spree, right? You wonder why that stuff is increasing? That's why. Fucking pisses me off how, how people are wanting to take the most important learning opportunities, the stuff that is never actually said outright, but the important stuff that we learn as we're growing up, the important things that you are supposed to learn as a kid, not as an adult. You're not supposed to learn all this shit after you're, after, oh, well, and once you become 18, you can become an adult and learn all this stuff. Well, what, are you, what, are you, what are some of you pushing on to some of these kids? Let's shelter them from competition. Let's shelter them from, from, uh, from anything that could possibly hurt their feelings. Let's shelter them from this and shelter them from that. Let's not that, let them learn these important lessons. And then after they're 18, well, look at, look at this. And then you wonder why some, some people get so fucking depressed after they get out of high school. Oh, but they thought they were special snowflakes. Do you know why they thought they were special snowflakes? Because of all this, this, the stupid shit we coddle and the stupid shit that we, these, these stupid rules, these stupid zero tolerance policy rules, it's stupid. God damn, how can, how can anyone support that shit? You know, to me, we should be teaching self-defense. We should, we should be teaching, you know, uh, 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 some sort of martial arts. Oh, but you can't do that because the Christians will say, well, you know, they're teaching Eastern religion. They're teaching Eastern religion. And, and, and the, the opposite side will say, well, we shouldn't have to teach them how to defend themselves. Well, I get so fucking sick of this society shouldn't have to kind of shit. Okay? Or society shouldn't. Or society should. I get so sick of this shit. You stating that doesn't change anything. You, you know, it's more, if, if, if that's really what you're trying to shove for, say, well, I really wish society was more like this. I really wish this. So at least when you say that, you can be like, well, you know, I wish things were like this. I know they're not, but I, I wish they could be. No, 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 society should be. And we need to treat society in the way it should be, not the way it is. Because, because cabbage. Hate that shit. And, and the right does this same shit too. It's done on both sides, but it's fucking annoying when the left does it. We've been fortunate that we haven't had the religious right really getting through as nearly as many things as they would have liked to. We've got those few states that have shoved forth their, these religious freedom bills, right? but they haven't gotten much more power than that. They could, they could, and we need to be very vigilant about any of that. But the stuff that's been allowed to go over the top is the way that, that everything seems to be about trying to completely dismantle our entire social system. And I don't, I, I don't understand why you would want to do that. 
Yes, our system has problems, but don't dismantle and destroy the whole fucking thing. Don't throw out the whole the baby with the bathwater. You know, if you hate if you hate our way of life that much that you want to just destroy it entirely and then not really have anything solid to replace it with. You know, have you have you considered, you know, just go go live on some uh, commune somewhere? You know, there's a lot of communes in the United States. Have you thought about living on one of them? If you don't like the way that the other, the, 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 the regular social way of, of doing things, you don't like the, the social media, you don't, try commune living. It can be pretty fucking cool. Okay? There, there's a lot of them throughout the United States. If you don't like our current way of life, then try something else. Try at least experience these things that you seem the, these uh, that that shove forth some of the ideals you say are important try that kind of living for a while you know you you'll eventually i mean every kind of way of living has pluses and minuses and maybe you'll decide later on well you know i guess the the, the minuses of the other thing isn't that bad or you might say hey yeah, the minuses is this are 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 are, are okay with me. I, I can deal with this and I like this. You know? I'm not saying that you check out a commune to be to be insulting. I'm saying, you know, honestly ch check these things out. It would be a good thing to check out. They can be pretty cool. If shit really starts hitting the fan here, I might try to see if I can make it to a, a couple of them that I know. If I can get that far anyway, I mean, it's going to take some gas. Check, the, check that kind of way, out, way of life out. You know, give it a chance. Experience being around people who live the way that you say, you, that you seem to shove forth that you think would be a good thing. Live around a lot of people like that. It might be the best thing you've ever done. You know, the, the things that you're, you're stressed out about in living in the, you know, the rat race of a culture that we live in, um, you, you know, if, if that stuff is just really stressful to you, try something else. But you're, you're not going to, to, to get... This this rat race of a culture we we are in. I mean, it, I assume that you're in too. Um, it is not going to change when you're just insulting it. You know, change because we're going to insult you more unless you do. No, that doesn't work. But kind of going back to the beginning of the video, women cannot pretend that they know what it's like to be a man just like men cannot really pretend to know what it's like to be a woman. Okay, there, there is that kind of ignorance going on, and, and some of the only way that you can experience that is if you were to sort of drop off the, the social anything for a while, make yourself look like the opposite sex, live as that opposite sex for a while, try to socialize and figure out how, all that sort of thing, then you can kind of learn what it's like. You, you can get a little more of an idea of what it's like. You can also get an idea of what it's like if, if you're not able to pass at all as the opposite sex. You can get to know what it's like for trans people. So, well, some trans people, some trans people are, are, are do a, a you, you never know, <laughs> you know. So don't don't get me wrong there. Um, I, I'll leave a link to a video if I can find it anyway, of a woman who she lived as a man because she wanted to to know what it was like, and the outcome was she was very surprised. Men do tend to handle their emotions differently, and this is not based purely on social stuff. There is so much stuff that so many instincts that we all have and the different sexes tend to tilt towards a particular way that uh, you know we handle emotions different ways that that um we process information different ways and now now 
when it comes to some of the ways we categorize, well, some of that can come from our upbringing, but there's other parts of it that are just kind of, that's the way we're wired. Now, we can modify and change our wiring after a period of time, after enough work, but I think we need to try to honestly look at what our instincts are and then try to reduce the negative effects of those instincts. Don't shun those instincts. Just understand that that's what they are. And then let's try to do what we can to reduce the negative effects of them. But when it starts to sound like guilt trips about having them, you're doing, you're, you're doing the same thing as telling people you're going to burn in hell for eternity. Soon as any guilt element even comes anywhere in the picture, that's exactly what you become. And I wish there was, there was something where we could support women trying to support women's issues and support men trying to support men's issues. But the moment it, it becomes about what's wrong, you know, men saying what's wrong with women or women saying what's wrong with men, that's when it becomes a problem. Both sides are doing it. And, you know, if we weren't trying to, well, well we must push forth free egalitarianism. Feminists doing the whole intersectional thing is them trying to say, look, we're egalitarians, but we can use these special words so we're so much better because we're more educated than you schlubs. And then we have the men's rights and, and then sometimes the uh, anti-feminists and anti-SJWs uh, declaring egalitarianism, even if they are speaking against, as a whole, the idea of trying to make things better for women. I think women should try to make things better for women. Men should try to make things better for men. Gay people should try to make things better for gay people. Trans people should try to make things better for trans people. Black people should try to make things better for black people. If we're breaking things apart into these groups anyway, what is wrong with um, groups forming support groups based off of their demographics? Now, if you say, well, it's good for anyone except white people, then you're a fucking hypocrite. We should allow all groups to do this, especially since you know that it, there, there is coming, there's, there's coming a time in, in, what is it, supposed to be by 2050, that uh, uh, white people are going to be my, a minority here anyway. And then you can still treat oh, all those poor white people, ha, 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 ha. Is that going to be the, the attitude still? You know, no, you don't get to, you don't get to have any support groups. That, that bothers me, that does, that does bother me quite a bit. If, if everyone else is, is able to have a support group and is able to, to take some sort of pride in something about the demographic that they fit, then the majority demographic should be able to do this too. You can find it as distasteful as you want um, for w whatever sort of reason, because uh, it goes against the progressive stack. I, I don't exactly know. I don't know what people's problem is with white people, straight white people, wanting to take pride. You can say, well, you know, they're allowed to take pride all the time because they're privileged, because they... Uh, you know they don't have to ex they don't have to experience the stuff that we do and so uh, uh, but that means they sh they th that still means they shouldn't be able to take pride you know what you say about about them not having to experience what other groups experience is absolutely true you're right you know and if if you really want to look at this privilege and this 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 uh, on the basis of what people don't have to experience. You know, uh, yeah, uh, 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 most uh, white people are pretty privileged in those areas, in those specific kinds of things. That shouldn't mean they can't they can't take pride in them in in anything. You know, I th I think I, shaming should not be a technique that gets used. I've spoken against this uh, with when it comes to the right uh, for uh, many many years. Shame is a terrible tactic. 
And I think it's funny that uh, people like Eagle Eye 1975 thinks shame is a great tactic. Well, you sure don't like it when, when the left pushes it on to you, do you, buddy? <laughs> you know, oh, it's only okay when the right does it because they're righteous. Why, because they have religion to back them? I mean, what? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but shame is not a good policy for anyone to shove forth. Shame is not a good tactic. You already, many, many of you already know what it's like to receive that. Um, it doesn't matter how righteous you think you are. Shaming them is not going to, like, change their mind. It might end up making them cower down and be like, damn, I, I have to be really careful. Or you could literally make someone depressed. But it's okay to make those people depressed, just not the other way around, right? No matter how insignificant you think someone's feelings should be about any particular subject, if you expect the person you're talking with to care about your feelings on a subject, then you need to care about theirs. This goes for all sides.